Hello, this is Brian, the rock guitarist and vocalist slash singer uh, for the wildly overrated SoCal, and you're listening to Damage Goods on Little Rally Radio. If you'd like to stream full episodes of the weekly show for free, including lots of cool tunes, go to our website, damagegoodsradio.com, and click on the blog or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, on the street, or wherever else you can find us. And you're listening to Damage Goods on Little Rally Radio. My name is Matt Dunn, and welcome to episode number 197 of the show. And we've got a cool show for you tonight. We've got an interview with a band from Olympia, Washington. They're called Gen Pop. And they played recently with my co-host, Seth. His band, No Love, played in Richmond, Virginia last week. And they played with this band, Gen Pop, who I had heard... I'd already heard some tracks from, but I think this was the first time they'd actually come through the East Coast area. So... Luckily, I got a chance to sit down with them before their show the other night in Richmond, Virginia, and we chatted about Olympia, Washington, and how the band formed, and it was a cool interview. So thanks to Gin Pop for sitting down with me to talk, and also they do this song called Dear Jackie, and when I first heard the song, I was like, wow, this is a really cool band, but I couldn't find much information about them online, so luckily I got to interview them and find out a little more, but they do have... I believe they just have a couple of 45 records out now at the moment. They don't have a full-length album. They're working on that. But in the meantime, I do have an interview with them. So we are going to play this brand new interview with a band called Gin Pop from Olympia, Washington. And we'll be back here in a little bit. Hey, this is Matt with Damage Goods Radio. I am here in Richmond, Virginia with a band called Gin Pop. Where are you guys from? Washington. I was wondering if everyone in the band could introduce yourselves. I'm Ella. And what do you play, Ella? I play guitar. I'm Wilt. I play the drums. I'm Ian and I play the guitar. I'm Gabriel and I play the bass. How long has Gin Pop been a band for? Uh, two and a half years now. Two years? Two and a half years. Yeah, around there. How did everyone in the band first meet each other? Hanging out. Yeah. Hang in. I met David in Portland and he moved yes. to Olympia. And I met Ella and I met Gabe through just the music scene and stuff, yeah. you know? Like Ella plays in another band called Table Sugar and Gabe played in a band called Bats. Oh, you play in Table Sugar? I play in Table Sugar. I, I love that band. Thanks. The song Dear Jackie. Is there a story behind that song? There is a story behind that song. I don't know if I want to tell the whole story, but it was about a houseless person who lived by me years ago. And it's, it's just about the neglect that houseless people receive. And being faced with that so often and confused uh, when you don't really have the resources to help everyone. Also, I noticed recently that Gin Pop has been played on the Henry Rollins radio show on KCRW. Did you guys notice that? Yeah, I did not. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, he played our record and yeah. along with the world too. Thanks, yeah. Henry. Hell yeah. Yeah. He plays really great music on his show. Yeah, he's playing some cool shit, man. Like, cool. yeah, played the world and he also played some. Uh, I think he played the mallard. I can't remember. Maybe he didn't, and we just listened to mallard yesterday. <laughs> I think that. <laughs> Have you played shows with the world? Yeah, yeah, they're the homies, man. They're the best. I interviewed them a couple years ago. They came through and played with Knots from Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, badass! That was a fantastic show. If someone has never been to Olympia, Washington, what should they check out when they're there? With the shoots, the shoots falls. It's a little bit north of Olympia, but it's beautiful. It's amazing. The, the nature. I thought it was south. Oh, it's south of Olympia. Yeah. A lot of things, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of beautiful nature and hikes. Yeah. yeah, if you ever come to Olympia, you should leave immediately and go to the National Forest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Don't waste time. Should you listen to Gin Pop while you're walking through the forest? Oh, yeah. If you have a boombox, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> you got one of those little pills that you can like, throw on the river, lake, or wherever you're at. Bump it for the fishes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Has it... 
everyone been in other bands before Gin Pop? Yeah. 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 Yes. specifics. <laughs> Anything you want to mention? I played in Vex. That was an Olympia band. They were big fans of Vex on the show. Oh, cool. Yeah. I played in a band from Indianapolis called the Heart Attack Jizzers. <laughs> what does that sound like? We're in an extreme music band. Extreme music? Yeah. Maybe extreme country or? We were kind of bumpkin, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I played in the, the band Lysol and American Nudism. Okay, and Lysol was on Neck Shop Records, right? Brandon from Neck Chop Records, he sent me some few records, and Lysol was one of them, so it's cool stuff. I haven't really heard it for a while, so I don't, I don't even know which which record that is, but... <laughs> I'll just send you the picture yeah, yeah, yeah. When, I get, when I get back home. <laughs> what are some of your favorite bands coming out of the Olympia area right now? Table Sugar. Table Sugar. <laughs> Table Sugar and Spirit. A spirit mm. or a American spirit. nudism. American Electric chair. Electric, Electric chair, chair, yeah. That's cool. Beta boys. Beta boys. Trans effects. Trans effects. Yeah. CC Tra- Vex. Yeah. CC Vex is great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The band. What else is there? Oh, Breaking the pigs. Breaking the pigs, yeah. The old twig. So is Vex no longer a band now? No, we're done. We're over. To wait for the 15 year reunion anniversary. Yeah, hold your breath. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, it's over. <laughs> is this the first gin pop tour? We did a weekend down to California. We did like two in the Bay and two in LA, but other than that, this is, yeah. This tour is probably equals about the amount of shows that we've ever played. Mm-hmm. It's true. <laughs> yeah. That's true, yeah. <laughs> and where are you going on this tour? Are you going all over the place? We basically are shooting down from the northwest to I-70, clear across the country, up the east coast, and then taking I-90 back for a little bit. And I mean, yeah, we're making some big drives, we're seeing the country, and hitting as many places as we can in as few days as we have. What are some of your favorite venues to play in the Olympia area? Oh, the, the roller rink. I want it, but we haven't played it yet, but I want to play it. <laughs> it's coming. Do they have shows there? They no, will. They will, you yeah. Will. You, you can rent it out and All, do whatever you want. Also the Garden Center, which we haven't done, but <laughs> sounds nice. Lions Park, which is on its way. We're going to do it. We, these are future venues. We've though. never played any of these places. Yeah, um, the Eagles Hall. The Eagles Hall is cool. Yeah. That yeah. was cool. There was a show there. The I like the Sugar bowling the alley. Played. Yeah. The bowling alley, which we've never played. Yeah, we've never played that, huh? Sure. No. There are oh, shows there, though. Shows. There are shows yeah. at the bowling alley. Here's the Voyeur. Here's the Voyeur. That place is pretty fun. Dumpster Values. Yeah, we Dumpster Values. Either. We haven't played there. Have you played with the band Lithics from Portland? Yeah, we played mm-hmm. once. No, we didn't. We did. I have played with them in a separate band. Oh, what band was that? It was, it was called Vats. Oh, okay. I'm playing with them. Oh, no, September. we didn't play with didn't them. Play with them. Is this with Table Sugar? Yeah. yeah. Where at? I think we're going down to Portland. I don't know. They we just are. hit us up. What? We are, wait, we are playing Portland. Oh, I'm oh no, Table Sugar is playing with Calithics. They're playing a free show in North Carolina, I believe it's next week. Oh, cool. Another touring with Stephen Malcolmus from Pavement, but they're I think they're also doing a free show in uh, Durham, North Carolina, so oh. excited about that. I love them. I really like their new record. They're my family. You are my family. <laughs> They're good. Yeah. Oh, no. How long has Table Sugar been around for? Ooh. Three and a half years, maybe? Yeah, I think so. How many Table Sugar releases have there been so far? One, and then one. a new album is coming out, like, this month, I think. And do you have a, a name for that record yet? Yeah, it's... Collected acknowledgments. And is that going to be on a label or is that on Bandcamp? Yeah, it's on a Stucco Records. Stucco. Which is based in Olympia. Does Gin Pop ever do cover songs? <laughs> Me and you and Ella played one part of a cover one time. That X song. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We, we, we wanted to cover We're Desperate by X, but it just never happened. Because I'm not very good at playing singing. 
at the same time. I kept on trying to do it, and it just wasn't happening. I'm not very good at winning covers. Yeah, so. yeah we're, we're focusing really hard on wrapping our heads around our own music. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then later, maybe we'll start learning other people's music. Has anyone done any gin pop covers yet? Have you heard that? No, no, surely not. In no way. Would that be weird to hear that? Uh, I mean, I, it would be flattering, but I can't imagine anyone would want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Crazy things so, have happened. Yeah, crazier things maybe have happened, but there's really so many very nice songs out there to play. Yeah. <laughs> How many releases has Gin Pop put out so far? We've done two records, and we released a, a cassette tape. And that had some live material from a show at this club that used to be around in Olympia that's no longer there. And has it all been on the same record label? Our first record was with Upset the Rhythm and Lumpy Records. And then the live release was done under Chapel of Crime. It was just a, a cassette. And then the new record is on Vila Records from Sam. I love Upset the Rhythm. That's a great label. Yeah, it's a good label. Shout out Chris Tipton. Gentleman Chris Tipton. I'm a big fan of Terry also. Oh, yeah, I love Upset the Rhythm. I just interviewed them, so it's fresh in my mind. But oh, weird! Did they come through? No, they uh, Skype. <laughs> we did a little video interview. That's cool, yeah. It was midnight here, and it was like 2 p.m. over there. So yeah, Al Montford's like, you know, the Australian rock and roll Jesus. He even recorded a promo for my show on an electric sitar. So that was that was pretty epic. Where can people go online if they want to hear Gin Pop's music? YouTube.com. Bandcamp and the SoundCloud. Soul Seek. Soul Seek. <laughs> there yeah, you go. It's still around. I still use that. Uh, hell yeah. Yeah. People should be encouraged to use it. Yeah, people need to use Soul Seek. File Get sharing is, is good. Your pro file sharing? It if flies you, low to the ground. Yeah, if you have access to a computer that's yours and call it yours, you should you should file share. Definitely. And it runs it runs at a low, it's like only 146 KB like as a file so it's like hard for anybody to trace it so it's like really pretty secure because they're looking for like really loud programs like uTorrent and shit like that and you do, but you can pirate as much as you want on Soul Seek. it's dope it's the way to go yeah. I know that Danzig from <laughs> the Misfits he won't autograph bootlegs so if someone had a gin pop bootleg would you autograph it yeah yeah yeah. I would I would try to maybe buy it off. I would be so stoked to see it. That'd be cool. Yeah, I'd be very interested to see how they made it. So you wouldn't be offended or No. Definitely not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, not not shout out dancing because it's fucking that guy's a fucking bees trigger, man. There goes your spot on the dancing tour, but Yeah dude. <laughs> it's ruined. Yo, fight me. <laughs> Or maybe you could settle it on stage and then... Dude, I'll fight Dan. Bootlegs versus no bootlegs. I'll kick his old ass. <laughs> That's like the other side of the century. I know. It's, he's confused. Yeah. He doesn't know what that means. <laughs> right. What are the future plans for Gen Pop? Oh, we're working on a record. Yeah, we want to make a, a long playing record. And uh, I think we want to keep doing shows and pl playing out as much as possible, yeah. Do you know when this new record will come out no we're we're still making it ready yeah so let's see we're midway through 18 it'd be really awesome if it was being produced by winter time yeah. any sneak peek acapella previews from the album no no, like <laughs> no acapella set no. gin pop unplugged maybe on mtv no Maybe we'll play a song tonight, but yeah, we have to, we'll have to get there first. Thanks for talking to us today on Damage Goods Radio. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank absolutely. You. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. And you're listening to Damage Goods on Little Riley Radio. My name is Matt Dunn. I'm your co-host, and I'm here with uh, what's your name? Oh, um, uh, uh, DJ Seth Magnetic. We'll go with that one. There you go. The classic one. Yeah. One of the classic ones. One of the classic. One, one of the many. The, right. <laughs> and what did we just hear there? We heard that was a singer. His name is Falco. 
and that was not Rocky Amadeus. He actually, do you know he actually has more more songs than that song? That's impossible. Yeah, I know it sounds weird, but that was. I'll say I loved him in Star Fox. <laughs> he was pretty great in that. Yeah, yeah. I, do you like it when musicians branch out into video games? Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, have you played Have you played the uh, Motorhead video game from the early nineties? No, I have not. I haven't either, but I've seen pictures of it. It looks ridiculous. I, I, I saw something about a. Um, uh, there was a like NES game, I think, or something like that. I don't think it really came into being where you play like as Dio. Oh, something no. like that. I don't know. There's like all these like metal references in it and stuff. No, I haven't. Yeah, that was a thing that happened. I yeah, didn't know about that. Wow, it's funny because I, I, I actually before I came here, I was even watching. There's an anime called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure where all the characters have like. There's like a you know character named Ario Speedwagon. <laughs> called Speedwagon. Another character is named Dio. Nice. Uh, there was one where two characters they were Loggins and Messina, and like <laughs> they're like changed up a little bit, and like all all the character names are just like silly like classic rock bands. It's pretty good. That's pretty cool. Well. Yeah, we heard Mr. Falco from... Uh, the song was called Vienna Calling, and that's from his Falco 3 album from 1985. I think it was his third album, so... <laughs> but... I don't actually know, because that's the only one I've ever actually seen. Uh-huh. Um, I hope it's first. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we'll see. We'll have to do some more digging. But before Falco, you heard a band from Manchester, England. They're called The Fall. And the track was called Fortress, and that was off their Hex Induction Hour album from 1982. Before that, you heard... I know, that's weird. I was uh, so it didn't start with the fall. No. And the show is running off the rails already. It really is. You're right, You're right about that. We're only 30 minutes in. Well, it's 2018. I mean, all bets are off. Yeah. So The track you heard before that was a band from Olympia, Washington. They are called Gin Pop. And the song was called Dear Jackie. And... Before that, you heard, to begin the show, you heard an interview with Jin Pop from last week in Richmond, Virginia, because you played a show with them. Yes, yes, we did. Yeah, it was a... a very tiny kitchen. We, you did, yeah. It was a fun show, though. Um, yeah, no, I had, I had a blast. Um, I sadly, by the time I finished like loading all the equipment into my car, I tried going in to see Haircut and couldn't make it inside uh, into the kitchen to see them, so... That was a bummer. Hopefully, well, they'll come down and play in Raleigh sometime soon, though. You'll get a haircut soon? Yeah. Yeah. Get a real job. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and the opening band goalie was... Good, too. Yeah. But yeah, Gem Pop were definitely pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, they were great. It was a fun trip. Oh, yeah. yeah. I had a good time. Yeah, and I stopped by the Guar Bar. I still have never been there. They have a, they have good food there. Um, it's usually between uh, going to Guar Bar and going to a record store. You know, I obviously usually gravitate towards one a little bit more. What if they could combine both into one? I don't think I'd like it, man. Like drunk people around records. I'm <laughs> or what about just the food part? Maybe? And like greet people with greasy fingers. Yeah, that, I guess I could yeah, see that nah. being a disaster. Yeah. yeah. I didn't think about that. Oh, well. But um, yeah. No, I had fun. We did get to go to Vinyl Conflict, and I did get to go record shopping, so it was all good. Oh, did you get anything good? Uh, I got a couple fun things, um, such as the band The Fun Things, you know, who do the song uh, When the Birdmen Fly. Great Australian band. Yes. Got a reissue of that record, which has been getting harder and harder to find. Um, so that was exciting. I had... I know they reissued that. It was a while back, which is why it's kind of now like you know raising in price a little bit oh, more okay it should be and um i've got a great band that i play on here every once in a while the art attacks oh yeah with a great song i'm a dalek that's a great it's a I classic seven inch uh, oh okay cool sadly no cover but you know if anybody out there in radio land has an extra cover or wants to make me like a fancy one you know with theirs you know well that would be greatly appreciated well after your show with J gin pop i Skedaddled. I also skedaddled over to Strange Manor, and I got to see Peach Kelly Pop play. Oh, was so, that that same night? Yeah. Oh, damn. So they... I, I was playing Band Dad. Right. Trying to wrangle everyone, so it took us forever to leave. Right. <laughs> I 
I bounced right after their set and made it right in time for Peach Kelly Pop, and that was fun. So oh, then awesome. I went to Guar Bar, and so I did like three pit stops in uh, in Richmond. Yeah, it sounds like you had yourself an adventure. I did all by myself. I did. That's how you do it. Is your I know. I mean, like I get. I was about to strangle everyone in my car because I was like, y'all need to shut up. I don't know where I am. <laughs> yeah, that's why, you know, travel somewhere by yourself. Then all you got to worry about is then your you're own on your own schedule. Like, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah exactly. That's, that's, that's like one of my favorite things. It's like being on my own schedule. Right. Um, like, you know, today I went out and did errands I'm looking to buy a new couch. So I went couch uh, shopping today. It was painful. Right. <laughs> I don't want to talk to anybody. Right. And the yeah. second you walk in the door, you have somebody who just You're like, hi. You. Yeah. And I'm like, go away. And I'm like, like, I'll look at a couch. Somebody's like, oh, well, that one. I'm just like, fuck off. Um, yeah, I didn't find one today. Hopefully the search continues. Um, but yeah. And like, I was out like, just, you know, putzing around town and it was nice. Cause like if I went in somewhere, I didn't see exactly what I wanted to see. And like, I just walked straight out. Not like someone be like, oh, well, let's look at this, you know? Right. You know, I enjoy my days off like that every once in a while. Yeah, exactly. Um, went and found some sweet VHS movies at the uh, <laughs> Habitat for Humanity. Oh, what did you find? Um, some just weird educational ones for random other purposes, not for me to watch. Um, mostly for sampling and stuff. And The Labyrinth, or Labyrinth, um, for 10 cents. So oh, funny. nice. There you go. Why not? I actually don't think I own a copy of that movie, so now I do. I don't either. Cool. For 10 cents. That's, I'd say that's worth it. I know. Uh, I hadn't been to Habitat for Humanity in a while, and forgot how awesome that place is and cheap. Yeah, yeah, I, I need to go out there more. I bought just a fistful of RCA cables for like a dollar, because yeah, I can never have there. too many, and they had a box full of them. Yeah, I think I bought like four new iPhone chargers because mine keep breaking. Oh yeah, so um, backups. Yeah, so um, and some other random things because uh, some new surge protectors. Like Lord only knows, like none of it's stuff that I actually am looking for, but like I actually kind of do need. Yeah. So I bought a bike the other day, cheap for fifty bucks. Just something to ride around the neighborhood and exercise. I yeah. don't need anything that's like super fancy. Yeah, exactly. If it breaks down, I'll just go get it fixed at the bike shop. So yeah, nice. nice. So I was excited about that. I'm going to get a a little speaker to attach to it, so I can. You know, There's a really good video online about how to turn your bike into a synth. Is it really? Yes. <laughs> Is, it doesn't actually show you how to, but it is, shows the proof of concept. Is that a lot of work? Oh, I'm sure it's, it's probably fucking like weeks and weeks of work. So you can just like attach a little uh, cord and then you're, yeah. you're stomp plug and play. Right. Well, it maybe they need to make bikes more synth friendly. I know, right? Yeah, that's. <laughs> I'm, I was surprised Craftwork hasn't made their own bike line yet where you could hook that up to a <laughs> synthesizer. It'd be kind of cool, right? Yeah. The, the the actual video of the one is actually really funny because, like, it, you know, kind of the BPM kind of is, like, based on, like, using accelerometers, like, uh -huh. how fast you're going. So, and, like, the pedaling and stuff. So, it's really neat. I don't know. I found it interesting. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I was, damn, I was just going to hook up a speaker to it so I could ride around listening to thin lizzy on my bike but um so we talked about animazement a little bit i will say the worst thing about animazement people with fucking bluetooth speakers just blaring garbage everywhere <laughs> um yeah bluetooth speakers are not for public keep that shit at home right <laughs> um i don't want to hear your shitty music yeah well, what if they were blasting, like, really good music? It's still obnoxious. Like, what if they are blasting our show? Like, they were listening to... They get a pass. <laughs> All right, well, good. Uh, no, I mean, it, it's... Uh, <laughs> turning into old man. I'm, I'm sure, like, Apparently. I've been in public. I know I've been in public with a stereo before. Because um, I used to have my boombox I carried around with me, especially yeah. when we were on tour. We just had it everywhere with right. us. But um, that's also not like a big convention of just like hundreds of people like crammed all around each other. Well, if they could get a cassette player on my bike, then I would uh, do that. Yeah. but You can do that. Yeah. that'd be <laughs> just, just duct tape a boombox to the handlebars. There you go. Um, good luck finding a boombox. Those things are expensive as shit now. I have one from probably... 
late eighties. Huh. It's um bought it from Miles. Oh nice. So, that would be the person to have a boom box. Yeah, yeah, it's a really Our cool friend one. Miles is a hoarder of everything retro and electronic. He is, so I luckily bought one from him before he moved, so I've got that as a backup. Mine was, well, it wasn't nice. I would like spray painted and everything. It was all customized and like, I let somebody borrow it and they're like, no, I gave it back to you. I was like, that's funny because I just moved and I didn't find it when I moved. Oh, should, are you going to settle it in uh, Judge Judy's court? Um, nah, probably not. Oh, <laughs> I was hoping for some drama there. Maybe, maybe, uh, Judge Lance Ito. <laughs> that's the only other judge name I can think of off the top of my head. Um, who's the guy who did the people's court? Uh, judge Wapner. Yeah. That's bum, bum. Um, that's, that's the three judges I know. There um, you go. Well, so, um, Yeah. I forgot what we were talking about. Oh, boom boxes. Well, I've got a new or, game for us to play. Oh, do you? Yes. Cool, because I didn't make any of this today. I, I again, I was running around all day and cleaning the house. So. Well, so now I'm turning the tables on you. Yes. I'm excited. This is the day I've been waiting for. So the game is is going to be the uh, Australian slang gang. Okay. Game. There we go. So yeah, uh, yeah, we're playing the Australian <laughs> slang game, and it's because I recently purchased a Australian slang dictionary. So. Back on the slang game. Yeah. <laughs> so I was going to read some terms for you and see if you can, uh, uh, you know, figure out what they, what, what they mean. You don't what, get the exact definition, but like, close. yeah. So are you ready to play this? Yeah, let's go. Okay. Five finger discount. Just stealing something. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. I'll start off easy there. Fix your Jack and Jill. Is that like, uh, sex? That just means pay the bill. Oh, <laughs> that doesn't really make any sense. Yeah. I don't know that flat out like a lizard drinking. I, I am assuming that. Does it mean you're passed out? I mean, sleep. Being very busy, working hard, as in dead set, mate. I've been working flat out like a lizard drinking. <laughs> None of these make sense. Right. There's some weird. I mean, five figure discount totally makes sense because you grab something and you walk out of it without paying for it. Yeah. A lot of these are, I'm like, huh? Good day. Good day. Good day. Like good day. Um, it's it's uh like a buddy. No, no. <laughs> but you know, uh, like like good day, like good day, mate. Yeah, it just means good day. <laughs> means yeah, hello, yeah, exactly. <laughs> General purpose informal greeting pronounced good day with flattened vowel sounds, not good day. Gala, it's as in G A L A H. Oh, look at the gala on this guy. <laughs> um, it means genitals. A noisy and or foolish person as in you silly gala. Hmm. Or gala. I don't know. That's how you pronounce it. But sorry. Uh, maybe some Australian listeners will have to have to uh, learn me on Just that cringe. One. Just cringe. Yeah. That's, all, that's all always going to be. <laughs> Let's see here. What else have we got? We've got some of these are I'm like I'm like that's isn't that universal? Hair of the dog. Oh, that's when you wake up and have a beer because you're hungover. Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, right, right, exactly. Yeah, because it says hangover remedy involving more alcohol. As in, I felt a bit rough when I woke up. Bit of hair of the dog fixed that. You know, good old shower beer. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. And this is one that caught my eye the other day. Dog's breakfast. Huh. So when you're so hung over that like and you don't have food in your house, so you seriously just like eat the canned dog food laying around. Well that that could actually apply potentially because the definition is a 
a shambles, a mess, as in the place was like a dog's breakfast when I got home. So you can say, uh, I feel like I'm in yeah. shambles. My, my, my house was like a dog's breakfast this morning, but now it's all nice and clean. Right. Dipstick. Huh. I want to say penis, but... No, not quite. It's probably going to be... So let's see. Dipstick. Uh, da, 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 da. I have no clue. I, I can't even come up with a it. A foolish person. Yeah, they, that seemed too on the nose and easy. Huh. <laughs> Drain the dragon. <laughs> oh, it's an ancient Australian... Uh, one where uh, you have to go find a giant lizard and suck <laughs> the poison out of it to make antitoxins because everything in Australia will fucking kill you. So, like, you got to go out every once in a while and drain the lizard because, like, you got to have your antitoxins build up, like, your stock. Because, like, you know, you don't want to get bit by something and go home and be like, oh, shit, um, and then die. Right, exactly. So, it- uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, I knew that one. <laughs> right. To urinate, as in going outside, got to drain the dragon or siphon the python. <laughs> siphon the python. I, they, they, I don't like that one because it's like too close to rhyming, but doesn't. Right. It's a weird one. Um, dog's eye. They are awfully obsessed with dogs in their <laughs> slang. Um, I. Sadly, like I, I, I think about American slang, where most of it involves either sex, drinking, or drugs. Yeah, but I don't think this one's gonna be that. I think it is when you just kind of have like a bad eye for like judgment and kind of thing. I don't know. No, you think that, but no, it's a rhyming slang for a meat pie. As in, yeah, I'll get a dog's eye. Thanks, mate. <laughs> That's dumb. <laughs> also, why would you ever want to eat something called a dog's eye if it's not actually a dog's eye? Yeah, because you're going to be like, wait, am I actually... Is that what I'm actually eating? Yeah. Mozzie. M-O-Z-Z-I-E. Um, it is the Australian slang for Morrissey. It probably is, but no, it's also <laughs> it's also a mosquito. Huh. Eh, that one kind of makes sense. Let's see here. Mosquito is an awful lot of letters, you know. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, Milko, like M I L K O. I'm on Milko. Uh, is that the milk delivery person? Yes, it is. That is correct. And you got that? Yeah, that's the milkman who delivers fresh milk to the door. Not to be confused with Smoko. <laughs> delivers you smoke? No, nah, it's smoke break, you know. Oh. I don't know if I've ever brought that song in with me. What song is that? Um, what's the name of the band? The Chance, I think. Uh, they have a song, I'm on Smoko. Oh okay. oh, okay. I don't know if I know that one. Pissing in your pockets. Hmm. <laughs> Where you spend too much money on drinking. It's uh, telling a misleading story, as in, I'm not pissing in your pocket. It happened just like that. Huh. Okay. I guess that makes sense. <laughs> also, see. also the uh, you know, situation of that be like, <laughs> I don't know. Now I'm just thinking about somebody trying to pee in somebody else's pocket. And like <laughs> the general, like, kind of like, I don't know, procedure of going about that and... You know, it doesn't seem like it'd be an easy thing to do. Rock and lurch. Rock and lurch. Um, it is that gift that everyone shared. Wait, no, that's not lurch, is it? From the Adams fan. Was it lurch in the Adams fan? Yeah, I think okay, so. Okay, yeah. yeah. So lurch in uh, Wednesday when they're like dancing to the record. <laughs> Rock and lurch. It's, uh, People fucking love that shit. Um, it's actually rhyming slang for church. Huh. Which is weird. Is it like that uh, <laughs> fucking, uh, uh, who is it, the Crash Test Dummy song? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Where they lurched on the church floor? <laughs> That's like my favorite thing. It is Just a good like, line. It's yeah, a yeah. good visual like image. Uh, visual image. Fuck, the, god damn it. Um, 
yeah, a good mental image of like just like people lurching on on, on the church floor. That's right. <clears throat> huh. I don't know why I'm doing this, man. I can't even speak English. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> well, do you want one more then? Yeah, let's go with one more. Okay. Uh, storm, <laughs> storm stick, storm stick. Uh, again, want to say penis, but I know that's not it. Uh, storm stick. Is it a weather vane? An umbrella. Uh, that makes sense too. <laughs> yeah, you gotta stop Australia. You gotta step color. up on your gate on your like slang, like. Saul seems kind of lazy. Well, these are there's a, and some of these are some of them are just really obvious. We're like munchies, yeah. where it's like, well, we already yeah, we already have universal. Munchies. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's an entertaining read, that's for sure. It's, it's a good bathroom book. I guess you can turn a page and be like, oh, look, uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yes, that was the uh, from the Australian Slang Dictionary by David Tuffley and. I don't know. Maybe tune in another week for more of those. Maybe I'll maybe be a little quicker next time on them, or maybe <laughs> at just, least have some wittier like comebacks on them. Or maybe we could go. We could probably do like outdated slang from like the early 1900s. That would be fun. Yeah, that would be hell. Fun. You could probably do slang from now, and I'm gonna have very little clue. Right. Well, now it's. I feel like a lot of it's just abbreviations. A lot of stuff. it's just memes, meme jokes. Right. It's like Harambe. Yeah, you're. It means you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah who knows who knows i hate the internet me too i, I i'm turning in such a cranky old man <laughs> all you fucking kids and your memes and your pepe the frog oh no sorry they don't have pepe the frog anymore i forget yeah he's kind the of the nazis dumb. have that now right yeah um, they call poor that. pepe which i never really understood why they being taken hostage yeah. <laughs> yeah i feel bad for anyone who got a pepe the frog tattoo and oh i'm sure there's so many people um, that's ridiculous. And they got totally screwed over with yep. that. Yeah. But anyway, well, we do have some new music tonight from guess where? Let me guess either Canada or Australia. Correct. You won. Uh, <laughs> so now we're playing Jeopardy here. It's yeah. The easy category, but yeah, that was, yeah, we got new music from uh deaf wish. Remember, remember that band? Yes, I do. And you booked them here. They were very nice. Yeah, you booked them here like, God, that was like s- seven or eight years ago. Oh, my God. We're old as fuck now. So. Um, that was maybe like 2010. Something like that, or 2011. I remember I actually walked home. I have from... a flyer around my, uh, on my like, in my living room. Of oh, that's cool. Book. Yeah, that was a great show. That was uh, Straight Arrows, who we interviewed in the show a couple yeah. of years ago, and Death, Death Wish, Wish and, and Pain Fumes, right? And... <laughs> Uh, paint fumes who I didn't really know yet and who had been texting me and bugging me all day to come play the show and they showed up drunk. <laughs> um, so their first show in Raleigh too. Right on. Yeah. Um, was... I think I'd like briefly met Elijah for a minute um, in Charlotte because I went to a show at his house. Oh, okay. And he was playing the Electric Eels, and I was like, "Fuck yeah!" Like, yeah. Somebody in Charlotte listens to Electric Eels and has a house named after Electric Eels. That's insane. Was it the Agitated House? Uh, it was Suicide. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. Agitated. That song, Agitated. I feel like that's your theme song today. Uh, I'm. You know, I think I'm just tired. Like, I had a late night last night. Oh, okay. I stayed up way too long watching documentaries about experimental Polish music <laughs> till like four o'clock in the morning. Cause these are the things I do with my life. These are the choices so you, I make. You turn it, you, you're like how, no, I, I've, I've been there before where you look up and it's three thirty AM and you're like, you know, why am I watching? Um, I don't know. God knows what on YouTube. I'll say it was an interesting documentary though. It's called 15 corners of the world. If you are interested in very early experimental Polish music. I don't think I know anything about experimental Polish music. I mean, they had a whole like, um, studio for it. And a lot of it's like mostly involved in like making soundtrack, like kind of like sci-fi soundtrack stuff. Oh, and stuff okay. Like cool. that and sound yeah. effects, but like, it's pretty weird and gnarly. Sounds like, um, it. yeah, I know. I've thoroughly enjoyed the movie and it's, I, it took me like three times to watch it just cause I've been like fairly busy. Um, but I finally finished it last night and I enjoyed it. That's Seth's movie recommendation for the week. There you go. Two thumbs up. Uh, I'd, I'd say one thumb up. 
you got it's a very niche thing that you kind of have to have some interest in because like yeah. it's not shot documentary style it's kind of avant-garde and like it's the way it's put together and uh it might not be everyone's thing so is that, has that been the best thing you've seen recently um but yeah that's about the only thing i've seen recently that's new yeah i'm trying to think i haven't really watched anything recently yeah that's been about it oh well wow. that and jojo's bizarre adventure oh that's right but that's a very old thing you know yeah um but worth watching if you've never watched it it's fun and it's stupid it's so over the top stupid everyone has muscles on top of muscles and are like like standing in like barely any clothes like in this sexy pose and it's just over exaggerated fun times we did have a couple of of um dumb news articles here um We'll save them for next break. Yeah, we will. Let's get some music. We've been talking for like 30 minutes. We have, yeah. And as I promised you, we have new music from Def Wish from Melbourne, Australia. And they have a new album coming out July 27th on Sub Pop Records. Oh, awesome. That's cool that they're on Sub Pop now. Yeah, yeah. The album is called Lithium Zion. And they just released the first single from it so far. It's a really cool song, though. It's called FFS, which... I'm guessing sins for for fuck's sake. I'm I'm gonna guess, maybe. Again, I'm a little tired from staying up too late watching that movie last night. Um, or Foo Fighters suck. suck. Maybe it's Foo Fighters suck. There we go. That is a good one. No, just kidding. Um, Foo Fighters. Just I kidding. Like, Dave Grohl. Yeah, we love you. Um, yeah, you're a cool dude. Was it? No, it was Bush that follows us on Twitter, right? <laughs> yes. There's a few people that follow us on Twitter, and I'm like. What? Like, oh shit! Did we say something bad about them? Missing Persons follows us on Twitter. The eighties band. I feel like we talked about Missing Persons, maybe not in depth on here, but we played yeah. it before. Like, yeah, you know, there's a few in the uh, Eddie Money, Bush. Oh god, <laughs> my friend Eddie Money. <laughs> yep, your good friend Eddie Money. Yeah, he's he's on to us right now. He's following us on Damn. Twitter. So, <laughs> and also Nard, why the human serviette follows us, which. I think it's I'm the that's the one I'm probably the most proud of. So. Yes, yeah, no, I, I love Nardwar. Yeah, I'm gonna send him some more records soon, hopefully. Oh yeah, he had, he just interviewed uh, the Subhumans, UK Subhumans, on his uh, podcast. One of the best reunion shows I've ever seen. Where did you see them at? Uh, I saw them in Texas. Oh, in, what year is this? This is the same year as in, I'm, I'm wearing my bastard shirt from when I was in Texas. Oh yeah. Um, I, 2010 2010 um 2010 and, they played oh yeah i forgot dude, how were the subhumans amazing i bet yeah um they like you know t- they had tons of energy it was fun it was good and then poison idea played and they were like the worst shit ever like, <laughs> that's what i heard it's a real bummer yeah bastard were pretty amazing like actually bastard was probably like one of the best shows i've ever seen in my life oh wow um and so yeah that was a good year for music but um yeah subhumans were great i would i would kill to see him again i would kill to see him for the first time so uh so yeah dick if you're listening oh, they, great, come back to the states and tour and in raleigh play a show at disneyland and do mickey mouse is dead yeah i really that's my goal in life is to see that happen oh yeah did you go see the dickie ziller night i did not no uh, i heard good things but also i was not <laughs> i was gonna like get there like maybe when they're starting and didn't feel like paying 20 dollars just for that. yeah yeah exactly and also the crowd probably was gonna be a bummer but i heard very good things about it yeah well, uh no I, I missed that one unfortunately but we digress maybe, maybe the uh when they do the 60th anniversary of punk they'll yeah. do a, a tour and when everyone's johnny ron's like 100 or whatever yeah that sounds about right I imagine him still caking somehow, but anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, new Death Wish. Yes, it's it's pretty cool. It's uh, called FFS, and uh, yeah, we'll be back in a little bit. All right. You're still listening to Damage Goods on Little Rally Radio. And you can call me Matt Dunn, and you can call him... Um, what are you going to buy now? Oh, uh... <sighs> DJ not so free bird. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, and you said a long a block of hits right there for yeah. your for your drive home. Possibly what some might call a nonstop rock block. Yeah, I would. I would say so. Air horn noise. Air horn <laughs> noise. Uh, 
what, um, what the hell did we hear there? Yeah, that last one was off the new Parquet Courts album, Wide Awake. Um, that was almost had to start a fight. Slash in and out of oh fuck is it in and out, in and out of patience? patience i think yeah. yeah okay that's a that's a great track yeah no that's definitely one of my favorites on it um reminds me a little bit more of like you know the earlier days parquet quartz a little bit oh yeah yeah um do 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 and then we had, uh before that we had new music from patois counselors yeah that was a song called repeat offender oh off yeah their new lp um I think it's called Proper Release. That's correct, yeah. And I forgot who put it out, because it's not Negative Jazz. Ever slash Never Records. Ever slash Never, yes. Out of New York City, I believe. Yeah. Um, Great great label. Um, I'm glad that they finally got an actual full-length album out. Yes, uh, because we were talking off-air. I was like, I think I've seen them play Repeat Offender for, like, you know, like four years or something like that. Right. It's an old song. But Um, it's always one of my favorites in their live set. Yeah, it's a great track, and... It's good to hear it in an actual studio. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, before that, from St. Louis, we had Pineapple R&R, as in rock and roll. Great name. Um, <laughs> Although the EP is called Rick and Roll, so then yeah. you're like, is it Rick, Rick and Rolled or Rick Rolled? Like, is that the... I mean, I think they're just going for that edgy, like, you know, Rick and Morty humor. Maybe because like, you, know, you got to be really smart to understand that stuff. <laughs> uh, this is true, but yeah, that was a song off their new seven inch on which called is called Rick and Roll on Lumpy Records. That's a song called No No No, and you know I'm a sucker for songs that have the word no in them. There's a lot of them, so yeah. Um, and before that, we had new music from the Shifters, all the way from somewhere in Australia, which I do not have it pulled up because I do not have a laptop with me. Um, are they from? I'm assuming they maybe are from Melbourne because the name of that song is I think Melbourne. They are. Yeah, yeah. Melbourne and Monash Youth League, um, and that is off of a new seven inch called. Oh, sorry, I just sat down. Um, my computer's still broken, so I do not. Usually, I use my phone to look up all this stuff, but I have to use it to play music today, so like I can't really switch back and forth too much. Uh, it's it's fun. Great band though, the Shifters. Oh yeah, no, that's great. That new seven inch is cool. Um, and before that, we had that was your Canadian track of the week. It was a band called uh, uh, called Lonely Parade. They're from Montreal, Quebec, Canada, and the track was called Night Cruise, and that is on their upcoming album. Working on the Night Cruise. <laughs> that's right. That's off their upcoming album called The Pits, which is coming out August 14th on Buzz Records, which is a label out of Toronto. Before that, you heard... That was unusual. That was a band called The Breakfast Club. Yeah. And that was Madonna's like new wave band. Huh. And... Like, is that just like some kind of slang that I just don't, I never knew? Maybe. I, I'm not really sure. If like, because, like, what year did the Breakfast Club come out? I think it was like 85 or something yeah. like that. Or, like, I'm sure if I actually, like, Google it, it's just going to be, like, things about the movie. And I also have, like, my internet turned off on my phone so people don't bother me while I'm playing music. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> so that's not going to work, anyways. Um, yeah, I mean, don't you forget about me? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, that, was, that was a that was a 1979 demo that Madonna did with her previous group, The Bre- Breakfast Club. She was in a couple of bands before she went solo. Apparently, I mean, I think most people usually are, unless you're like an American Idol, right? Um, I'm sure that manufactured pop bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> we're looking at you. Um, um, what's a popular thing now? I don't know. Clay Aiken. No. He tried. He he did. He, he's representing North Carolina, man. We can't talk. Sorry, shit. sorry, sorry. Um, I did see my friend posted a picture of like a letter she wrote confessing her love for Clay Aiken when she was a kid, and she posted it on Instagram. <laughs> and uh, he actually like responded to her. Oh, really? Yeah, that's awesome. He said something really nice and sweet. Yeah, that's like, cool. It was cool. I I have no ill will against. No, I don't really either. Odd noise. Um, but uh, I, studio noises. I, I have uh, no ill will towards Clay. Can... No, I mean, I don't really either. It's... Um, yeah, I'm, I, I don't know. Take that, Migos. <laughs> Migos, yeah, well, that was, a, but that was a track called Little Boy Lost. And yeah, there's a 1979 demo, which has like four, three or four tracks on it. And 
It's, um, I don't know, it's interesting to hear Madonna singing before she was Madonna. Yeah. Kind of a rougher, a little bit of a rougher, compared to our pop stuff at least, rougher band. But anyway, before that, from France, you heard a band called the Lemmy Nanas. And there's a track called Dimanche. And that was off of their Shadow People album. Just Is that the uh, sequel to Jumanji? <laughs> It might be, yeah. That might be the uh, theme song for that movie. Uh, before before Liminanas, you heard a band called Automatic, and it was a song called Strange Conversations. And Automatic is a band featuring, I believe, it's Daniel Ash from Bauhaus, Love and Rockets. His uh, daughter is in that group, and it's cool stuff. I think they they toured with the current Bauhaus side project, uh, Pop Tones. Or pop tone, I should say. Um, so, yeah, it's cool stuff. And you also heard a band from Los Angeles They're called Cold Beat. And that track was called Chain Mail. And that's by off of their Chaos by Invitation album from last year. And to begin the set, way back when, you heard your Australian track of the week, for me at least. That was a band called Death Wish. D-E-A-F, of course, not yeah. Death Wish, like the Charles Bronson movies. Or the, you know, hardcore, like, like hardcore with a capital H record label. Right, <laughs> yeah. Actually, it's more like metalcore, I guess. But, oh, yeah. Um, not really my thing, but... Uh, aren't they remaking Death Wish? Yeah, they did with uh, Bruce Willis. Yeah, gross. <laughs> uh, pass, pass. Right, <laughs> yeah, well... But that was a track called FFS, and that was from their Lithium Zion Records, we mentioned before, which is coming out next month on Sub Pop Records. And I think we also mentioned they're from Melbourne. And yeah, they're playing at the Hopscotch Festival uh, in September. So hopefully I'll get to see them again because it's been many years since you booked them. So yes. Why aren't you booking like Australian bands every week, Seth? Come on. What's the um, deal? Because I paid like over, I paid a lot of money out of pocket for that to happen. Okay, well, you don't see technical on me, but uh, <laughs> I mean, now, like that was a period when there weren't really venues or bands. Yeah, that that too. was kind of a weird period, wasn't um, it? So, like, it was really hard putting it together because nobody wanted to play, right? Um, so there was just no opener. And we didn't even do we even have the new Kings yet at that point? Did, did no, we? we did not. That's why it was at a that was a weird place, hair cuttery, like a. a like i don't know the place was odd it was yeah it was like a bar was like in a, like, slash like salon right um yeah that was an odd show it was. i mean that place was fairly friendly like yeah, they were nice there and stuff and kind of just like let us do shit for free because they'd like sell shit tons of beer i had a good time yeah no same um yeah i mean that was it was a fun show um like if it happened now like i think it would be fucking nuts but yeah um, sadly at that time, like I remember being like that, I think that might've been like the first or second hopscotch, um, like right after that too. Yeah. It was like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Really close. Right. Uh, maybe not. I don't remember. Somewhere around that time. Yeah. I, Cause I just remember going out and handing out flyers everywhere and like, you know, still just like barely anybody came, but you know, only so many people can be cool before it starts being lame. Pretty much. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe you, Maybe uh, Coldplay was playing down the street that night. Yeah, maybe. Or like Dave Matthews Band or something like that. Right. Some, <laughs> some shitty jam band. Well, I want to oh, see this that shit. Australian garage punk band. Like, yeah, would I care about see that? somebody doing like fish covers down right. at Red Hat? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I assume that's what happens at Red Hat. I don't know. I see a bunch of hippies over there all the time. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I'll drive by and I'm like what is this song? And I'm like, Oh, third eye blinds playing. Okay. <laughs> and like, I'll yeah. actually hear I'm like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, blah, blah, blah. I got nothing. You got nothing. Yeah. Not at the moment. <laughs> you said you had some news articles though, right? Well, they're very extremely important articles. So, Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Are they about, uh, the, um, reboot of dog police, the TV show. Is that happening? No, I, I was, you got my hopes. Up I, I, I was hoping, you know, I was just, you know, you know, the secret, like if you put it out there in the world, it'll come back to you. Well, There is the, uh, right. Isn't that what the secret is? Well, there's like a, life is fucking bullshit. Well, there is a new rap song about dog police. It's uh, uh, a group called cats with attitude. CWA. 
and this song's called Fuck the Dog Police. It's pretty good. That was a, that (laughs) (laughs) the bar is pretty low on this show. I feel like as far as humor goes. And like, I think that one kind of, kind of, you know, um, did you end up getting to watch the pilot for the dog police show? Oh God. I forgot. I totally forgot. Ah, A lot going on. So killing me. Um, all right. I have to, I I didn't watch it this week, sadly. Um, cause I want to have it fresh in my mind. So maybe next week's episode, I can only be here for an hour because I have to go DJ. Yeah. I will spend the whole hour just giving a like second by second rundown of the dog police pilot. <laughs> maybe we just reenact the pilot. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll print out scripts and like, right. you know, um, I'll, I'll play Adam Sandler. You can play Jeremy Piven. He only has two, two lines. I think. Well, I read, I read some of these headlines sometimes and I'm, I'm kind of like, is it really the headline or like, not cause it's like about just kind of like a yeah. silly headline. Like there's one here. The cures. Robert Smith says he doesn't, he does not identify as goth. That makes sense. I think nobody you in think Bauhaus so? really did either. Or uh, definitely nobody in sisters of mercy. Like, um, I think what's his face from sisters of mercy had like a big fucking hole, like blow up about that. Oh, right. Right. Um, yeah. You know, but he did say that I have ill-defined features and naturally pale skin. I mean, not at the moment, but because I unfortunately fell asleep in the van yesterday. Very, not at the moment because I unfortunately fell asleep in the sun yesterday. Very ungoth. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny. Little Robert uh, Smith. Uh, accidentally getting tan. Right. And he says, every goth I've ever met has been very nice, you know. As a subculture, I think it's full of wonderful people, but I have never liked what's classified as goth music. Okay. Well, uh, all right. I feel you. Yeah. Well, Not all of us can like the Crow soundtrack. Right. Which you are on, Robert Smith. <laughs> Hypocrite. Right. Um, also, a uh, a man who claims he traveled from the year 6491 and has just passed a lie detector test. Huh. So... What he, have they do? They share any like nuggets of you know, like advice he has from the future? Yeah, he says that he's from sixty four ninety one, but got stuck in twenty eighteen when his time machine broke down. His name is James Oliver, and they his story was doubted, but paranormal expert sorry paranormal experts say they were blown away when they put it to the test because you know the lie detector test came up accurate and let's see what has he been saying he's been saying where where i'm from the years are longer the planet my planet is further away from the sun than yours so it takes longer to get around we have gifted mathematicians who work to calculate our years from those from other civilizations although the man has a birmingham accent with a u.s twang he claims he's from outer space Huh. And he says more species and planets are discovered in the future and that there are fights coming between aliens and humans. We are constantly finding new planets and galaxies every day. Most of it is just nothing. Sometimes you hit the jackpot and find intelligent life on it. You find new planets, new ecosystems. And let's see here. It says... He has a personal relationship with a few aliens. I have friends that consider aliens. They're ni- a nice lot. They are. Don't be quick to judge. So he doesn't go to specifics, like, you know, if, like of types of aliens. Like, just, oh, yeah, no. I got a friend who's an alien. It's cool. I can say that. Um, <laughs> well, he does say that we all, we all have our own artificial intelligence system called Siri. The same name as the Apple operating system's assistant. Huh. And... Let's see here. It's a, we also don't know about the uh, screenplay that he wrote, wrote that was actually a historical, like, you know, documentary called Cowboys versus Aliens. Right. <laughs> that's, that's how it happens in the future of the war with the aliens. It's with cowboys. He said, there's a restriction as to what I can tell you about the future when asked who the next U.S. president would be. Okay, well, 
I so. mean, it's fine. They already know who that is because they've been traveling. The government's been traveling forward in time and finding that out and grooming them at a young age. Right. <laughs> I think they might have skipped with Donald Trump, but, you know. Right. Um, or that's just how it's meant to be, sadly. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. That's a hard thing. It's like, you know, if you really did travel from the future, like, can't really say a bunch because, like, I mean, you could fuck up everything. And then you could just possibly not exist. You know, <laughs> you could just like accidentally speak yourself out of, out of existence, I assume. Yeah, you could um, do that. So, uh, yeah. <sighs> I hope it's true. <laughs> Tune in to, uh, we'll, find we'll, out in we'll, the we'll, we'll have updates every, every week. Also, I know it seems like. Everyone was freaking out on the internet because Netflix was down for like half a day or something. Did you see that? That was the most productive half a day in America. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, God, I I didn't even notice. I didn't either. So um, until I went on the internet, people were like freaking, freaking out, out about it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's usually how. Like, if I have trouble getting on a website, I just like hey, it's blank down and see like if people are flipping their shit. Right. Um, Because, like, I don't know. I have problems a lot of times with, like, uh, work, you know, websites going down and stuff. Yeah. I actually need to be doing, like, doing work. Like, Discogs goes down every once in a while for short periods, like, or POS system. Um, POS, point of sale, more like, uh, yeah. (laughs) Um, Oh, yeah. But, you know, that stuff happens. I'm always like, oh, fuck, I got things to do. But at least I still got Netflix. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Um, yeah. No. Which would not Netflix and work. Also, like, I don't know. I just thought that was funny because I don't. I yeah. Don't... I mean, I don't care that much. There's so many other things I, I can be doing in my time. Right. <laughs> um, I don't think there's anything on Netflix where I like really have like, oh, my God, I have to watch it. Yeah. Where I couldn't wait like 12 hours like or wait till the next. Yeah. Day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and like you know, I guess you're in like a good place then, though, because like it's not like somebody else can watch it before you get to and like spoil it for you. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Because nobody can watch it, so fuck all y'all. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've, I, I I haven't watched anything on Netflix in a long time. See if if we still had video stores, then it wouldn't be a problem because you could just rent the tape and watch it that way. I mean, we. Do now. Yes, we do. Of, yeah. uh, the Alamo Draft House. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, like, yeah, you can just do that anyways. Um, so, like, I currently work right next door to the Alamo Draft House a lot of days. Yeah. Because um, that is where my job's, like, warehouse is. And also another thing is right there. Um, so I am there a lot. And I will see some of the same people there, like, seven times a week. I believe it, yeah. Just, like, returning and getting more like videos it's right. insane um so like yeah apparently they're doing very well with giving movies away for free <laughs> right well uh, no the place is always packed i can never find a fucking parking spot and it drives me insane also all these people are fucking idiots and yes i can tell that you are smoking weed in your car before you go see the avengers <laughs> oh my god just non-stop it's it's everyone like dads like just judges yeah. whoever well uh, yeah uh one of one of the people that um hangs out our space um he was out there one day and saw two dads like pull up separately park next to each other talk for a minute and then go like walk around the side of the building nice and he was walking up from the gas station to totally see them and like they noticed and like i think freaked out about it uh. Because they're definitely like you know getting high well, on that that devil's devil's cabbage, devil's lettuce. That's right, devil's lettuce. Well, you can't uh, you can't enjoy a movie unless you're high. So I mean, like I can't enjoy anything in life unless I'm high. Yeah, what is yeah? The point? I mean, what is life without? Yeah, no, I do not. <laughs> I do not enjoy that at all. Um, that is like the complete opposite of my actual life. Um, yeah, but you know, Alamo Draft House seems cool. I still yet to see a movie in there. Um, well, it's fun. Then. They're... I know. It's just like, I don't, I could go alone. I would probably end up having to go alone if I went. I did. Yeah. I, I went 
and I really have no problem with that, but like when I don't know, I, I want to see infinity war, but I'm not that like yeah. stoked on it. Um, and I don't, I don't want to go without my wife and both of us having two hours to go see, two and a half hours to right. see a movie, three hours actually probably to go see a movie is like not happening right now. Although that new Mr. Rogers documentary is about to come out. There. Oh, it looks great. I keep yeah. seeing the, um, previews and I'm actually pretty kind of excited. Yeah, that looks, I hear it's awesome. And I think they're going to have that one there. Um, so yeah, no, that, that seems really, I don't know. I'm not usually big on the, like the cutesy, wholesome, like kind of thing, yeah. but like that looks like, you know, heartwarming and a good, it does. Play. And I think, I mean, I know a few people have said this, but I think that's needed for our current times where, you know, being, you got your beauty pies or whatever, spouting off their alt right stuff to all the kids while showing yeah, like, Minecraft. And <laughs> I, I don't know. Being nice needs to come back into vogue. I mean, I, yeah, everyone else should have stopped being assholes. I'm going to keep being an asshole, but like, <laughs> you know, I'm not a, a, I'm not outright mean to people. I'm just dismissive. Well, that's a little different, but you know, being um, being an asshole for no reason oh, for yeah. like is just stupid and needs to go away. So, oh yeah, totally. Um, um hopefully, you, hopefully, it'll, these kids need values and do. morals and. Stop playing the Grand Theft Autos. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto. Do people still play that? Is that... I don't know. Do they still make those? Uh, I mean, I don't, I, I don't remember, even know. Uh, actually. I remember like the last one came out, like you know, like maybe like three or four years ago or something like that. But I thought uh, everyone moved on to uh, Fortnite or you know. Something I think like that. I think it's just Fortnite. That's what all I don't know. Plays, right? Yeah. I mean, I play every once in a while too. It's kind of fun. I'm just really bad at it. And I'm like, I know this kid who's like kicking my ass is like 10. And now I feel bad about myself. <laughs> nice. Um, but it's still fun. Uh, so do you have a, do you have any of the modern, the newest game systems? I, I have a PS4. Okay. Um, I somehow end up with a large amount of Amazon gift cards. So end up not okay. being terribly expensive. Cool. Well, I, I thought about getting a Nintendo switch. I really want one. Yeah. Um, and it's dumb because I talk shit on nostalgia all the time, but you know, Legend of Zelda games yeah. have been kind of a bar, like you know, as far as like video games go, for just being consistently good, and yeah. then they're being Twilight Princess, and then consistently good. Like it's just one of those like series that like you always know it's gonna be right. great. Um, and you know, same with like Metroid, same with like a lot of those Nintendo games. Well, some of those series. You know, they might have a dead here and there, but they'll, yeah. you know, the, I mean, they're no Sonic the Hedgehog where everything just like went to shit and they couldn't bring it back. Oh my God. No matter how <laughs> they try. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. So like, and, and I just do like, you know, a lot of the Nintendo licensed stuff. Like, so uh, I would get one, but I don't think I can have two, like four or $500 things laying around my house like that. Right. Right. I understand. Um, like the one barely gets use other than to like to watch TV. I, I mean, I do play games on a lot, but you know, yeah, that's that's main focus usually. So for to stream K dramas, and you know that punk rock music to rot your brain. So I don't think I've ever looked at punk rock on it. I don't know. I mean, oh, I yeah. all oh, the well, Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got all that. Yes. To rot, you know, all that heavy metal punk rock yeah. music to rot your brain. Yeah, those you know heavy metal punk rock. Uh, or what is it? Punk rock, heavy metal freaks, you know? That's right. Well, uh, speaking of freaks, uh, you getting any more freakish music or? Uh, maybe. We got time. Oh, man, we are. I didn't realize how late it was. <laughs> uh, I'm fly. I always look at this clock that's broken next to us. Like, right. It's like 10 minutes. Uh, well, it's like an hour and 10 minutes off. So I'm always kind of like, uh, uh, yeah, let's do two quick ones and then we'll say goodbye and pick the, the last song. So, cool. yeah, we'll be back in a minute or two. All right. We're back already? Yes, we are back already. <laughs> and you could still call us Damage Goods if you want. Um, I guess. Yeah, if you want to, you don't have if to. If you didn't touch that dial. Right. Uh, one sec, my headphones are all quiet again. Uh, and you could call me DJ Killed by Seth. 
There you go. And with me, as always, or most of the time... Matt Dunn. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we just heard, like, some quick tracks. Some of those quick tracks. What did we hear? Um, that last song was a band from Philly called Blink Spell. Oh, yeah. Um, off of their My Asthma LP. There's a song called Scythe. One of my favorite board games. Um, yeah, no, like, still stoked on that LP. Still listen to it a lot at home. It's awesome. If you still haven't checked it out, you're you're a fucking idiot, man. Damn. What are, what are you doing? It's a good, um, good, uh, good, <laughs> are you trying to get your quote on the uh, sticker of the album? Yeah, exactly. Um, and for that, we had two new things from our friends over at Neck Chop Records. That's right. Um, that was new Kid Chrome off their... I think it's just a self-titled seven, seven inch. Um, there's a song called Paul mall one hundreds. Cause we've all been there. You know, <laughs> we got a couple days to like payday and like you only got a couple bucks in your pocket. So you buy yourself some Paul mall one hundreds. Cause you know, it'll last you a while and tastes like garbage or I, I, I can, I don't know. I've never smoked before. So, <laughs> so you can relate. <laughs> I, I have um, no idea. I mean, I, I, I believe you. I'm not trying to yeah. doubt you, but um, and for that, we had new liquids off of their Hot Licks Revenge LP that just came out. Uh, that is a song called On the Phone. Cool LP. Cool record label. Wait a minute. Is that a punk song about the telephone? Never happened before. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? I know. Punk's getting into te technology. Telephones, TV, boredom. What else? The Buzzcocks did it first. Is yeah. That what this is called? I'm just kidding. Uh, oh, well, I don't know. There's a lot of things. You know, anarchy. Oh, yeah. Cops. Yeah. I almost did bring a couple songs about cops earlier. I don't know why. There was one song in particular that was stuck in my head earlier today. Uh, the song Fascist Cops by the Kids. Oh, that's a great song. Yeah. Um, and I was going to bring that, but then I, then I was having computer problems again because my computer is, again, just very quickly dying how about some punk songs about your computer dying how about that um uh, i can think of a couple uh, <laughs> not go. specifically my computer but right. like you know about computers and technology and fun stuff like that uh maybe we should start making like some themes every once in a while you know yeah that'd be cool um that takes a, like pre-planning and like us actually talking to each other outside of here Ooh, that would, like that'd be tough that's 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 like you know uh, that's what it sounds it's like. It's kind of like Fight collide. Club. Once yeah. you leave, you just don't talk exactly. about it. Exactly. Um, also, you're just a figment of my imagination, I assume. <laughs> so, like, I'm you know. Tyler Durden, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyways, it's time for us to get out of here. So, we'll do our last segment. Uh, before we do that, I do want to say happy birthday to my dad. I hope you're feeling better and getting some rest. Um, oh, yes. Happy birthday. So, and now to get out of here, we got a couple. Uh, if you are new to the show, um, I apologize. My nose has been really stuffed up. My allergies have been terrible today, but you know, that happens. Um, I, I mean, my voice is not nearly as angelic as it usually is. So if you do <laughs> just, you know, tune in another episode and you'll just hear like this heavenly chorus whenever I talk. I'll be back to being an angelic upstart in no time. Yes. You know, um, and I'm also sniffling straight into the mic. I'm sorry. Uh, so, what we do at the end of every show, almost kind of ish, sometimes maybe, um, is I list off all of the track titles of the songs I did not play, but not the artists, and Matt picks the most interesting one. And then we listen to that. And sometimes I'll veto him if it's like, if he picks a lame <laughs> one, and I'm like, oh, you are going to pick this one, which is much cooler. Well, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, but, anyways, here is here are your choices for today. It is high maintenance. Say what you mean. Look on the screens. Too sick for total punk. <laughs> uh, Call of the Wild. Everyone's favorite book that they were required to read. Uh, Loser. Read a Requiem Mass for me. Oh, that's, a, oh, that's a mouthful right there. <laughs> Blank expression. Wind up dead. Asking for it. Desde Arriba. I just mispronounced that. I'm sorry, but I don't know how to. Uh, don't talk about it or die 
in. <laughs> Nothing. It's not like die in blank. It's just die in. Okay. Well, how about I don't know. How about don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. Well, that is by a show favorite that we haven't played in a while uh, called Vex. Oh, off yes. Off of their first 12 inch. I think it was just kind of an EP, though. I don't think it was actually like a full. We just played an interview remember. with Gin Pop, which yeah. features members of Vex. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Connected. Uh, yeah, no, I love Vex. And uh, this is off of that self titled uh, LP. I can't remember exactly again if it was LP or if it was EP, but. These are things that don't really matter. Because yeah. the song rules. Yeah, that's all you need to know. And because you're listening to us. And if you're going to go home after the show and download it on Napster, you don't really care what... Yeah, on. exactly. Just remember, <laughs> two X's in Vex. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is Vex with Don't Talk About It, and we'll be back next week with something. Something, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I, again, I'll have to split a little early due to my DJ responsibilities. That I take very seriously. So you can play some uh, sick ministry jams? Um, Only first ministry album, because that's the only one that matters. Oh, shit. Shots fired. All right. It's truth. Um, All right. So here's Don't Talk About. See you next week. Good night.